Kathy here from Kathy's Cute Creations. Today we're doing week two. Oops. So this is love. And it is a nine patch, and I call it boxed in. So let me show you what it looks like. Like that, which is a nine patch. Boxed in, and it's got little corner stones on it, on the edges, on all the corners. I have my color chart here. Always get the color chart out. We're using four colors. And I'm going to show it to you here on the table. There we go. There's our four colors. So we have our A. Okay. We have the hearts, which are D. This is if you have the kit now. We have fabric E and fabric C. All right. So let's start building our nine patch. Okay. So the first thing you're going to notice is I forgot to put my black squares out. They were sitting over there on the table, but that's okay. So you'll have 16 of the black, 16 of the white with the hearts. You'll only have four of these because we're making four sets. Alrighty, so I've got four stacked up so that we can just chain stitch them. And that's what I'm going to do first. And then this is what's left over over there because those we're going to put the pink on the right and the left of our rectangles. But we're going to do that next. Okay, <clears throat> I would have started this sooner, but I have been on the telephone with my sister. Oh my gosh, laughing hysterically. She keeps me in stitches, I'm going to tell you. Okay, so first off, <clears throat> she makes really, really pretty quilts. She does not have her own self-confidence, and so she doesn't think that she does, but I've seen her quilts. They're gorgeous looking. Well, anyway, she wants to learn how to free motion stitch <coughs> on her sewing machine. So she went out and got a deal on a jazz ma machine, just the jazz one. And really, I would not suggest that for a beginner to learn how to do free motion quilting because... There is no speed control on it. All right, how did I already run out of squares? Lordy, lordy, what did I do? I did three, I'm missing number four. Did I count wrong over here? Nope, that's four. How did I count wrong? Somewhere. There's four. Oh, I shortchanged myself a square. I've lost a square in the process. Let's go find it. Okay, I found it. So anyway, <clears throat> first off, she's never owned a baby lock, so she doesn't have any clue of what the feet would look like or anything else. So she sends me a picture of the feet, and the, some of those feet don't even go with the machine, <laughs> especially her universal foot. I don't know. I guess they had another sewing machine, and they swapped out the foot, but I told her that was fine. It would work anyway. And, you know, I gave her the feet set, that 32, which I haven't even finished showing y'all how to use all that. So I can give that other kid away. But anyway, the point is that I showed, I gave, sent her that. So she went through it and she found what all to use. Um, so the first thing that we did was we did a free motion. So I showed her, I, I was going through it over the telephone with her because, you know, I don't, I've never seen a jazz machine or anything. So I don't know anything that's going on with them. And at the time that she bought hers, of course, it didn't have a book. So I found a book online, downloaded it and sent her the book so that she would know what she was doing. So she gets it and she looks in the book and she goes, well, it doesn't, and, and I told her that the first thing that you gotta do when you do free motion quilting now is you need to set your stitch length at zero and your width. Well, her book, she's trying to read her book to figure out how to drop her feed dogs. Now her older sewing machine, I don't remember the name of it. I think it's a Singer brand, I'm not sure. It didn't have a capability of dropping the feed dogs. And so she didn't, she couldn't use it. She couldn't figure out how to put the cardboard or anything there. I was going to send her some shrinky dinks. Do you all know what shrinky dinks are? That is from a long time ago, I'm telling you. But that's a hard piece of plastic and that would work fine to tape over her feet. I mean her feed dogs. But anyway, <clears throat> so she says, well, I can just go in there and grab my jazz machine. And I said, okay, so she... So she's reading from the book, and I said, you know what, why don't you go sit in front of your sewing machine, because it would be a lot easier, and then we can figure it out. So she goes, okay, so she gets in front of her sewing machine. She's trying to read it to figure out how to do it. Well, apparently you're supposed to pull this piece off, and the adjustment must be somewhere underneath here. And normally, some of the baby locks, it's in the very back, back there. And she goes, no, it's not in the back. So she finds it, she drops her feed, she's fine. And so I'm... I told her to go get a piece of uh, fabric. Well, come to find out that, which I did not know this, so I'm going to, oh, look at this. Here's my miscount right there. Uh, that was my black stuck to my black. Okay, I just happened to have an extra one over there. But anywho, so she says, I said to her, so the first thing you do is get you some fabric. Well, 
all her batting, unbeknownst to me, is 100%, um, it's not cotton, it's polyester. I said, okay, well, we're just doing this for a sample, I, and I will send you some cotton fabric, I mean, some cotton batting. And the reason that we got in on the on the batting in the first place is we have I have a niece that's having a baby. I mean she's already on her due date. Okay, so the baby's a little late. And I asked her if she was making a quilt for the baby, and she said yes. And so then we were talking about somehow we got involved in talking about the batting. Hold on one second. Okay, so let me back up just a hair. So before this conversation with the new baby that's coming, you know she's got uh, Bob has. His son had triplets, so she made three blankets, but she never did finish them up with the quilting part. Okay, and she has a, a really old, old long arm. <clears throat> but anyway, so this is when I said to her, are you gonna make a baby blanket? And she had just told me she hadn't finished up the others. And I said, okay. And so she started laughing. She goes, yeah, I'm gonna make one. I said, all right. I said, well, and so she says, well, I don't know how much fabric to make. I don't know how much fabric to buy. I said, well, buy, what are the colors? And she said, the colors were going to be yellow and gray. And I said, all right. I said, well, then why don't you go ahead and buy a yard of each? I think she said there was 16 squares or something. I can't remember because she wasn't making it a small little blanket. All right. And I think they were eight and a half inch squares and I was like 16 of them or something. And I said, oh, so you're not gonna make a teeny weeny blanket. She goes, no. So then I said, I, that'll be enough fabric to do that. Then take the leftover fabrics and then we'll make some baby burps pads and she goes I said don't tell me you've never made a burp pad as many baby things that you have made for everybody and their brother and you never took the leftover fabric and made it? and she said no <clears throat> so I'm explaining how to make it and this is how the conversation with the cotton batting came up because she asked me how do you make it so I was telling her how to make it I said you know what a figure eight is I said and the part that's thinner would be up against your shoulder over your shoulder and she goes Oh, and I said, yeah. She goes, well, but then how do you do it? And that's when I was explaining to her that you take, I said, the easiest way to do it, because now we're like on a time crunch because the baby's due, the baby's overdue. I said, so what you do is you take your figure eight, you cut out your two pieces of fabric, one for the top, one for the bottom, and then your batting. You set it down, quilt it just like it is, and then when you're done, take your, now this is, this was funny too. I said, so take the, the friction's the friction pin and she goes are those the pins that you sent me those three pins and I said yeah I said she goes yeah you know she goes I tried to use those and then when I put them on something and I marked them I brushed and brushed and brushed and it would come off and I said are you supposed to put an iron to it and she went an iron I said yeah the heat takes it off and she goes oh I thought you were supposed to brush it with your hand I said no the heat and she goes oh my gosh she goes now nah, I'm gonna have to do that and I said well what you do is you take this fabric after you've got it all done and it's quilted, take your ruler, go all the way around it in little increments and mark from the edge up to like three quarters or an inch. I said, this way you're gonna mark it and then you're gonna take your stitch and you're gonna lower it and then you're gonna go all the way around this little figure eight. Then when you're done, you're gonna take your peaking shears and you're gonna cut off the excess. And voila, it's done. It doesn't take much time and you've got it you can have it gray on one side and yellow on the other, and that's the baby colors. And she went, okay, so you can make some of those, and then you can just send them to me, and I'll say it's from you. <laughs> she goes, and I'll send you the fabric. I said, but I just told you the easy way to do it. She goes, no, it sounds like it's too hard. I can't do free motion quilting. I said, I thought you'd already done free motion quilting on your machine. And she goes, no, I've never done it on a machine. And that's how we ended up getting on her jazz machine and trying to help her go through it. And she's got a little bit of a lead foot, so... And you know, that's one of those machines that does the thousand stitches uh, in the length. Well, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a thousand stitches. So it's super duper fast and it does a lot of stitches. And I told her, I said, so the first thing that she needed to do was, so I walked her through the whole process of the stitching. Okay, this is what you have so far. Now, I ironed all of these to the left and all of these to the right so we can nestle them and then all of these to the left. So let's put them together. All right, here's what nestling is now. You wanna put it so that this goes to the left, this goes to the right, and you put them up together and you pin it because you want them to butt up against each other and that's matching up your seams. And then you go over here and you do the same thing. You nestle them up. Put a pin in it, 
and then we'll sew it and do them all like that. <clears throat> so anyway, so I helped her set up her machine. She dropped her feed dog. She put her stitching on zero and her width on zero. And then she did little practice pieces and I told her to her piece is really, really small. I said, you need to go with a little bit bigger piece next time. But at least I taught her how to do it. So she knew how to get it started and how to do. And then she said, oh my God, it was horrible. It was horrible. But I looked at it and it was not horrible. And I told her that practice would be great because as soon as she gets enough practice in, I said, once you practice enough times with your foot and concentrate on your foot first, that's, that is your speed. And that's what you want to do. You want to concentrate on your speed. You want it to be the same thing all the time. I said, and once you've got your speed down and then you realize how much your foot, you know, the pressure of your foot and everything, I said, then you can pay attention to your hands and what all's going on there. Because she tried to make a circle, which I thought she did pretty good for a first timer. <clears throat> she doesn't have enough confidence in herself because she did do a good circle, I thought. But anyway, so then she practiced a little bit and then she found out that it took a 14, size 14 needle. She tried to take her needle off. She couldn't get her needle off. She goes, oh, that's it. I'm never going to take my needle. I said, well, you need to take your needle off because you need to learn how to use your machine. You can't just have the same needle in. Eventually, you'll have to change your needle out. <clears throat> she says, okay. And so she managed to do that. She took it off, put it back on. And then after we were all done, it come, she wanted to know how to do a zigzag. So I explained how to do a zigzag. And then um, that's when we found out she was sending me pictures of her feet. And we found out that the feet that were sent, or the feet that went with the machine were not the feet that belonged to the machine. But anyway, I told her that was fine. We can always get extra feet for her. But as long as she had the, the universal foot, and she took the foot out of the 32 feet, and she just went ahead and she used that. And I said, there's nothing wrong with using that one on the machine. I said, next time I go to my baby lock dealer, I'll just pick you up one. <clears throat> so we had a good old laugh, her trying to work out her machine and, and everything. It was hilarious, I'm telling you. So I guess I'm going to, when I get done here making this, I'm going to go ahead and make some baby burp bibs. But I'm actually going to use that. You remember the, the um, Crayola fabric that I have and the red that go together? That's what I'm going to make the baby burp bibs. I'm not going to make it out of yellow and grays because my one, um, my gray fabric, I have earmarked, marked, I have it earmarked back of a quilt, so I don't want to use it. All right, to go ahead and sew this next set on the bottom strip onto the top two or vice versa. <clears throat> and then we'll come back and then we'll take a look at all of them after we've ironed them. And you get to iron these any way you want. All righty, so we have them done and we're going to put those on each side, right and left. But first, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put chain stitch these. And there are eight of these. So we're going to go ahead and do that first. And then I'll put the top, the right and the left, and then the top. So anyway, my sister made for um, somebody's baby, and I can't think whose baby it is. But she made the elephant blanket. And it's the little elephants that Pat Salone had on her, um, it was one of her YouTube, which I think was adorable, and she did them all in pastels, oh my gosh, and she showed me a picture of it after she had it all, uh, sewn together, and it is just adorable, and of course she doesn't know what size it is, so she goes, don't ask me the size, I don't know, so I was like, that's all right, don't worry about it, <laughs> work on a baby blanket, I had a, I mean, so she showed me a chandelier, a picture of a chandelier, and she showed me one that had black background and then one had a white background, and oh my gosh. I really like the one with the white because I liked the solid colors in the squares. And then I went ahead and I got online, I was looking for a pattern. She didn't have the pattern, she only had the name of it and she had a picture of it, so I, I looked for a pattern of it, and come to find out, there's a couple of different quilts that are named that. But the one that she showed me the picture of, I really, really like. Now, I believe the center square was four and a half inches. And then the two squares on the outer edges were two and a half. And the strips were two and a half. And it is adorable. I thought about making that for a small, uh, not a baby blanket now. I was thinking about using it for a table, uh, table topper. I have um, an end table downstairs. Um, I have one here in my sewing room 
they were matching end tables that my mom and dad had bought when we first moved um, down from Japan to Texas. And I got them after their death. But anyway, I have one downstairs. And I said, I think I'm going to make a table topper for that. And she says, well, what do you got on that table? What do you got on that end table right now? And I said, well, let's see. I have a folded towel on the very bottom, a white one. And then I have a brown towel on the top. And then I turned around and took a, uh, what did I take? A plastic table. Um, oh, my gosh. I'm drawing a blank. Um, it'll come to me in a minute. Placemat was the word I was trying to hunt for. I kept thinking runner in my head, and I couldn't get rid of that runner and then it was tablecloth and it's like oh my gosh and that's just an old plastic it's already tore up a little bit and everything she goes oh that'd be pretty neat because i can't even remember what the table looked like i said well it was a little more of a, a slight rectangle i would say i don't think it's a square but i said remember it had a shelf one shelf underneath it made out of pine and she goes oh yeah now i remember it i said and she goes well where's the other one at and i said well it's up in the sewing room because it wouldn't fit I have my cat tower on the other side of the couch, so it's not like it was going to fit over there. And so I just took a little, um, a smaller table next to the cat tower to go between the couch. So I just have it up here and it's got my radio and stuff like that on it. But I thought that would be pretty neat out of that chandelier. And I think I have a, um, a charm pack that is nothing but sort of dark solid colors. I don't want the light colors. I think the dark would look better. And I have some white fabric for the background. I just have to hunt up my uh, five inch squares, cut them down to four and a half. But I saw it in other colors where they mixed and matched and I don't like the same effect. It doesn't come across quite like I like it. And Karen liked the darker one, but I didn't really care for the dark one. Well, I didn't care, and part of the, I might have cared for it if the fabric was different in it, but the, they took the fabric and they used, it was like striped fabric or something like that. And I said, oh, see, I don't, I don't like the way that fabric is. And then along with that, although the background was black, they went and used for a couple of those squares, they used brown. And I don't feel like that made it come out. I, I feel like it uh, kind of lost that little bit in the quilt. But probably had you used the solid colors like it was in the white one, it probably would look good. So we'll have to see. But like I said, I wasn't going to make it for anything very big at all. It's just going to be a small location. So, <clears throat> And the little squares and the strips, would all they would all be two and a half inches. And now that we're done with these strips, we're going to put four on the top and four on the bottom. But first I'm going to do the sides. All right, that's what I'm doing first. All righty, so I'm going to get you started here. And all I did was I pinned it at the intersections here just to hold them down. Try not to run over any pins if you can help it. Oh no, it says my, my, uh, my bobbin's almost out. Let's see, can I get to the tail end of this? Come on. Do I have? Oh, I have a little bit. I should be able to make it to the very tail end of this before I have to change it out. There we go. And there we go. All right, let's try that again now that I got a new bobbin in there. guys go ahead and finish yours up and we'll be back and start the other side let's get started on this side here we did the same thing same kind of pinning now we'll arm those open okay so now we're going to attach the bottoms and the tops and then we're going to be finished so let's start that Alrighty, so Whatever way you iron these, do the opposite. So this one's outward. And so I did this one inward because these have to nestle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to nestle. Since I am right-handed, I always go to the left first. Nestle it and I pin it. Then I go to the right side. Do the same thing. Nestle it. Just like that. Pin it. I don't do the right hand corner because it'll match up. 
I go over here to the, the very first intersection here. I pin it. And then right here, I pin this one also. And the reason being is that if I was to start up here at the top and pull a little bit, I could end up distorting this piece and it would be too long for the bottom piece because there is give in this fabric. I know it's a little bit and you can't see it, but there is give in it. So to avoid that, that's the way I pin it. And now we'll go ahead and we'll start sewing them. And I have these just laid right here on my table, so. Okay, so let's start on this side here. <clears throat> and I did not iron the other side, by the way, in case you were wondering. All I did was just pin it just like I did before and start sewing. And then I'll um, I'll show you that fabric um, that I'm going to make that baby <clears throat> burp pad out of. I do not remember where I bought it from, so I can't help you out there. It is over fabric. I haven't bought any new fabric um, in the past couple years. I've cut down on the buying because I'm trying to use my stash so all this fabric is going to be older fabric. I'll tell you what I'm, I'm really tempted by some of that fabric on Fort Worth Fabric Studios website because boy do they have some pretty stuff coming out but I told myself I wasn't going to be doing that this year <clears throat> I'm not going to be buying any fabric now, my goal is to go ahead and, when I'm finished with this one on week four, to go ahead and quilt it because I want to use this downstairs. So we'll have to see how that works, and if it does, then I'll show it to y'all. And I don't know if y'all have made any burp bibs, uh, the burp pads, I shouldn't say bibs, pads. Uh, if you're interested in me doing a tutorial on it, let me know and I'll do one. I mean, I'm, I'm doing it the really easy, easy way. We're not going to make it hard. It has got to be easy. I don't want anybody to be frustrated by making it. But it should be easy enough that you can whip out a few in a day here. If you got a baby, you know, unexpected, you found out about a baby uh, shower you're going to or something, you'd like to make something. These are perfect. Go ahead and finish yours up and then we'll come back and we'll iron them open. All right, there it is, and it's called the Chain Blocks. I hope you guys enjoyed week two video of Fort Worth Fabric Studios. So this is love, and if you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and click on the little subscribe button. Click the little bell so that you can get notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And you can make a comment if you'd like. And I will see you next week for week three of So This Is Love. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.